Just as God in the Bible designs and creates animals and plants and humans according to his wishes, now we are learning how to design and create life. Yuval Harari thinks big for a living. Not so long ago, he was an obscure history professor, but his 2014 book, Sapiens, changed all that. He explored the past, cramming 150,000 years of human history into 400 pages. Authority will shift. Transforming himself into a literary phenomenon. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome once again, Yuval Noah Harari. Name dropped by the likes of Mark Zuckerberg, Bill Gates, and Barack Obama. The other book that I really enjoyed, a book by an Israeli author, Yuval Harari. His follow-up book, Homo Deus tackled the future, elevating Harari to a sort of digital visionary. <laughs> now he's back with his take on the present day. His new book, 21 Lessons for the 21st Century, explores the influence of algorithms on our everyday lives, how artificial intelligence will affect and maybe even replace us. I don't have any answer in the Bible what to do when humans are no longer useful to the economy. You need completely new ideologies, completely new religions, and they are likely to emerge from Silicon Valley or from Bangalore and not from uh, uh, the Middle East. And they are likely to, pro to give people visions based on technology. Everything that the old religions promised, uh, happiness and justice and even eternal life, but here on Earth, with the help of technology, and not after death, with the help of some supernatural being. What are humans for? As far as we know, for nothing. I mean, there is, <laughs> there is no great cosmic drama, some great cosmic plan that we have a role to play in it. Uh, and we just need to discover what our role is and then play it to the best of our ability. Uh, this has been the story of all religions and ideologies and so forth, but as a scientist, the best I can say, this is not true. There is no universal drama with a role in it for Homo sapiens. If you repeat a lie often enough, people will think it's the truth, and the bigger the lie, the better. Mm. Because uh, people won't even think that, oh, it's not something so big can be, can be a lie. And, um, and I think that fake news have been with us for thousands of years. Um, just think of the Bible. But, there's, <laughs> but, but there, is a, there is a concern. <laughs> One option that some people talk about is that um, only a catastrophe can shake humankind and uh, open the, the path to a real system of global governance. And they say that we can't do it before the catastrophe, but we need to start laying the foundations so that when the disasters strike, we can react quickly. Uh, but people will just not have the motivation to do such a thing before the disaster strikes. So the next step is we turn our gaze inwards and we say, OK, um, gaining control of the world outside us did not really make us satisfied. Let's now try to gain control of the world inside us. This is the big, really big project of mm. science and technology and industry in the 21st century will be to try and gain control of the world inside us, mm. to learn how to engineer and produce bodies and brains and minds. These are likely to be the main products of the 21st century economy. When people think about the future, very often they think in terms, oh, I want to gain control of my body and of my brain. And I think that's very dangerous. We have all this still myth of free will, that everything we choose is of our own free will. And this is a myth that served us well for a couple of centuries, but now it's becoming dangerous. We are probably one of the last generations of Homo sapiens, because in the coming generations, we will learn how to engineer bodies and brains and minds. Now, how exactly will the future masters of the planet look like? This will be decided by the people who own the data. Now, why is data so important? It's important because we've reached the point when we can hack not just computers, we can hack human beings and other organisms. Now, what do you need in order to hack 
a human being. You need two things. You need a lot of computing power and you need a lot of data, especially biometric data. But control of data might enable human elites to do something even more radical than just build digital dictatorships. By hacking organisms, elites may gain the power to re-engineer the future of life itself. Because once you can hack something, you can usually also engineer it. All of life for four billion years, dinosaurs, amoebas, tomatoes, humans, all of life was subject to the laws of natural selection and to the laws of organic biochemistry. But this is now about to change. Science is replacing evolution by natural selection with evolution by intelligent design. Not the intelligent design of some god above the clouds, but our intelligent design and the intelligent design of our clouds, the IBM cloud, the Microsoft cloud, these are the new driving forces of evolution. And at the same time, science may enable life after being confined to, for four billion years to the limited realm of organic compounds, science may ena enable life to break out into the inorganic realm. Humans are now hackable animals. You know, the, the whole idea that humans have, you know, this, they, they have this soul or spirit and they have free will and nobody knows what's happening inside me. So whatever I choose, whether in the election or whether in the supermarket, this is my free will, that's over. That's over. Today, we have the technology to hack human beings on a massive scale. Yeah, I mean, everything is being digitalized. Everything is being monitored. In this time of crisis, you have to follow science. It's often said that you should never allow a good crisis to go to waste because a crisis is an opportunity to also do re good reforms that in normal times people will never agree to. But in a crisis, you see we have no chance. So, 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 so let's do it. The vaccine won't help us go the to waste, of course. The vaccine will help <laughs> us, of course. It will make things you know, more manageable. Surveillance, people could look back in a hundred years and identify the coronavirus epidemic as the moment when a new regime of surveillance took over, especially surveillance under the skin, which I think is maybe the most important development of the 21st century, is this ability to hack human beings, to go under the skin, collect biometric data, analyze it, and understand people better than they understand themselves. This. I believe is maybe the most important event of the 21st century. By hacking organisms, elites may gain the power to re-engineer the future of life itself. Because once you can hack something, you can usually also engineer it. I think maybe in a couple of decades when people look back, the thing they will remember from the COVID crisis is this is the moment when everything went digital. And if this, is, this was the moment when every, everything became monitored, that we agreed to be surveyed all, all the time, not just in authoritarian machines, but even in democracies. And maybe most importantly at all, this was the moment when surveillance started going under the skin. Because really we haven't seen anything yet. I, I think that the big process that's happening right now in the world is uh, hacking human beings, the ability to hack humans, to understand deeply what's happening within you, what, what makes you, what, what, what makes you go. For that, the most important data is not what you read and who you meet and what you buy, it's what's happening inside your body. So we had these two big revolutions, the computer science revolution, or the, the infotech revolution, and the revolution in the biological sciences. And they are still separate but they are about to merge. They are merging around, I would say, the biometric sensor. It's the thing, it's the gadget, it's the technology that converts biological data into digital data that can be analyzed by computers. And having the ability to really monitor people under the skin, this is the, the biggest game changer of all. 
we've seen so far, it's corporations and governments collecting data about where we go, who we meet, what movies we watch. The next phase is the surveillance going under our skin. In mass surveillance systems established even in democratic countries, which previously rejected them, and we also see a change in the nature of surveillance. Previously, surveillance was mainly above the skin. Now it's going under the skin. Governments want to know not just where we go or who we meet. Above all, they want to know what is happening under our skin. What's our body temperature? What's our blood pressure? What, what is our medical condition? Now humans are developing even bigger powers than ever before. We are really acquiring divine powers of creation and destruction. We are really upgrading humans into gods. We are acquiring, for instance, the, the power to re-engineer life. All this story about Jesus rising from the dead and being the son of God, this is fake news. This is fake news. This is fake news. In recent years, we saw populist politicians undermining deliberately the trust that people have in important institutions like universities, like respectable media outlets. These populist politicians told people that, say, scientists are this small elite disconnected from the real people. You shouldn't believe them. And you had all these conspiracy theories that climate change is just a hoax, it's not real, and that the Earth is actually flat, and that vaccinations are are bad for you, and this spread. But I don't think it's too late. Especially in an emergency, people can change their views very fast, and they can discover hidden reservoirs of trust. You look in this crisis, who do people trust? They trust scientists above everything else. In, in all countries, in Israel, they close down the synagogues. In Iran, they close the mosques. Churches all over the world are telling people don't come to church. The Pope is doing all these ceremonies on, 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 on Zoom or YouTube. And why? Do they do all this? Because the scientists recommended it. Even the religious leaders have trust in the scientists. The easiest people to manipulate the are people the people like who believe in free will. <laughs> because you manipulate them and they don't even suspect because, hey, I chose it because this, this is my free will. We need some kind of global loyalty and global identity. Earth will be populated or even dominated by entities that are not organic, that they don't breathe, they don't have emotions. Like, the, the potential of AI is much, much bigger than any historical revolution. It's really a biological revolution. And now if you give the tools to start changing or overcoming biology, just, you know, think about sex life. Mm -hmm. Almost every religion and every ideology wanted to really change uh, human sexuality or limit it, but they couldn't. You had vows of chastity in the church, and how many people actually lived up to their vows of chastity? Now think, if you can really start messing with human biology, what will be the result of these sexual fantasies of different religions and ideologies? Then the big political and economic question of the 21st century will be what do we need humans for? Or at least, what do we need so many humans for? Do you have an answer in the book? Um, at present, the best guess we have is uh, keep them happy with drugs and computer games.